Good day, students. Uh, welcome to uh, part three of application of derivatives. We're still working on optimization. And in this problem, we're going to be using optimization to derive Snell's law. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and consider the following question. Uh, it says, light travels in a straight line, as we all know. Um, use the fact that uh, light takes the quickest route from point A to C. So let's see, this is point A in this diagram right here, and this is point C. So use the fact that light uh, takes the quickest route from A to C, basically minimizing time to derive Snell's law. Okay? So, uh, so we are saying that we want to show that when uh, light is traveling from point A, all the way to C, it uses the quickest route, the enhanced minimizing time. And the Snell's law that we're going to prove here, we're basically trying to prove, as you might have known, Snell's law, which is basically sine of theta 1 over V1 is equal to sine of theta 2 over V2. Okay? Keep in mind the fact that in this diagram, this angle right here is theta 1, and this angle right here is theta 2. Okay, so what is going on here is that light is traveling in uh, medium 1, let's call this M1, starting from point A. It hits an interface, let's call point B the point of interface. And then it starts traveling in medium 2, let's call this medium 2, all the way to point C. Okay, so we want to show that it takes the, it minimizes time or takes the quickest route. Alright, so... Um, since we're minimizing time, um, we need to create a function of time and then the, uh, you look for the extreme, the critical point and then set it to a zero and see how we can uh, derive this formula from there, okay? So what equation are we going to be using here? So we're going to be using the dirt formula, okay? I like to call it dirt. Well, what does dirt mean? It basically means that distance equals what? Rate multiplied by time. Okay, distance equals rate times time. Since we want to find a function of time, I need a t of x. This is my goal. I need a t of x. So I can differentiate it set to zero. And then uh, that would be my critical point, and then I can use it to formulate an equation. So I want to solve this expression explicitly in terms of time. So how do I do that? Well, I divide both sides by rate. So divide this side by rate. And divide this side by rate. Okay? This divides out, and then we are going to be left with time equals distance divided by rate. Okay? All right, so what are the distance? Uh, what is the distance that the light travels in uh, medium one, starting from point A to B, and in medium two, traveling from B to C? Can we write uh, an expression for that? Well, let's go ahead and label our diagram, put some variables uh, so we can see. Uh, how they all interact with each other. So let's call this distance, this perpendicular distance from the surface to A, let's call that little a. And how about this distance, let's call it little uh, b. Okay? Alright, now this distance, I'm going to call it D1. D1 basically means the distance that light travels in medium 1. Okay? And then this right here, I'll call it D2, which is the distance that light traveled in D2, in medium 2, sorry. All right, so this is also a perpendicular uh, angle right here. So let's see. How about we say the projection of the distance from A to C, this entire length from here all the way to there. Let's say that it is, um, let's say it's uh, K units long, okay? So let's say that distance is K, and let's call this distance right here X, okay? If that's X, then that makes this side right here, this side is going to be k minus x, all right? So this base right here is k minus x. All right, so how do we figure out d1 and d2? Well, we can use Pythagorean theorem, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So d1 is simply going to be, using Pythagorean theorem, the square root of a squared plus x squared, okay? And then d2, using Pythagorean theorem here also, is going to be the square root of b square plus quantity x minus k k minus x square 
Okay, so this is the derivative of the Pythagorean theorem. So this is d1 and this is d2. All right, let's go back to our equation. Uh, time, the total time, uh, I'm going to call it t, is equal to, it's going to be the time in uh, time in medium 1 plus time in medium 2. Okay? Since you're traveling different uh, different velocities, the time is going to be different, right? So um, in different distances too. So let's 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 abbreviate this so we don't keep writing this over and over again. I'm going to call t the total time is going to be t of m sub one time of medium one plus t sub m two. All right. So can we find an equation for these two t's? Uh, explicitly in terms of t and then combine it to get this? Absolutely. We're going to use this equation and uh, the triangles we just created, okay? Now, let's focus on the time in medium 1, t of, F of m sub 1. Well, it's, it's going to be, we know that time is in medium 1 is going to be the distance traveled in medium 1 over the rate that our light was traveling in uh, medium 1, okay? So d1 Using Pythagorean theorem, we we're able to establish that it's the square root of a squared plus x squared, right? So we're going to put that back in here. So d1 is going to be the square root of a squared plus x squared. And then r2 is going to be the rate in uh, medium 1. Let's call that v1. Okay? So that's t of m sub 1. How about the time in medium 2? Well, that's going to be the distance traveled in medium 2 divided by the rate in medium 2. And that's going to be the square root of uh, v square plus x quantity x minus, I mean, k minus x square over the rate in uh, medium 2, which is v2. How did we get this? This is the hypotenuse of the second triangle that we drew, which is basically d2. So using the Pythagorean theorem on x, k minus x and b, we get this right here as a measure of the hypotenuse. All right, so um, there goes t of m1 and t of m2. So as we stated earlier, t, the total time from a to c, is equal to t of m sub 1 plus t of m sub 2. I'm going to plug in these two values into these two equations, and then we'll have a function in terms of uh, explicitly solve in t for t in terms of x. Okay, So t is going to become um, the square root of a squared plus x squared over v1 plus the square root of b squared plus k minus x squared over v2. Okay? All right, now uh, we're, we're going to keep a, uh, a2 and v1, b2 and v2 constant because we know the uh, speed and v1 as soon as constant and v2 is constant and then a2 and b are, and k are also constants, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this with respect to x. So we're going to have dt dx is going to become d dx of uh, this entire function, this entire time right here, which is the square root of a squared plus x squared over v sub 1 plus d dx of this second expression here, which is the time in medium 2, the square root of v square plus uh, k minus x square over v sub 2. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and uh, differentiate them. So let's focus on the first one. Uh, since v1 is a constant, uh, I can factor it out of the differentiation. Write it as 1 over v sub 1. Now, this is a, a radical. I can rewrite it so it's easy to differentiate. So how, do I write, how about I write this as the derivative of a squared plus x squared raised to the 1 half power. So it's easy to apply the power of the differentiate. Okay? And then plus v2 is a constant, so I factor it out 1 over v2 times the derivative of, I'll rewrite this for easy differentiation, which is basically v squared plus k minus x squared, raised to the what? Raised to the 1 half power, okay? Now let's apply the uh, power rule on the first one. So we're going to have 1 over v sub 1 
derivative here is going to be times one half. Um, one half times a squared plus x squared. And when I subtract one from one half, I'll end up with negative one half. And using the chain rule to differentiate the inner expression, this is a constant, so the derivative of a squared is zero, the derivative of two x, of x squared is two x, okay? Plus, since process here, one over v2, differentiate using the power rule of the alpha function, we have times one half, uh, times b squared plus k minus x squared, raised to the subtract one from that, negative one half, times, now let's go ahead and differentiate in here. We are going to use the power rule in here again with the chain rule. So this is going to be 2 times k minus x squared. And then when we differentiate now negative x on the inside, we'll be left with negative 1. Okay, times negative 1. All right, so that's what we have. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, simplify, simplify the equation we have. Uh, so let's take a look at the expression on the left side of the positive sign. So you notice, notice uh, this 2 divides out with that 2 right here. And I can rewrite uh, this whole, uh, the left side here, as x is in the numerator, x over uh, velocity of light in medium 1 over the square root of this expression, a squared plus x squared. Okay? And on the right side, plus uh, this 2 divides out with that 2 over here. So in the numerator, we just have negative. So I can multiply that negative with this plus right here. So this plus becomes a minus. Minus. Um, let's see, what do we have on the top here? Okay. When I differentiated uh, x minus k, I mean k minus x squared, I was supposed to subtract this two, 1 from the 2. So this power is supposed to be a, a 1. Okay, so that doesn't go there. All right, so they have it. So in the numerator, I'm going to have simply have k minus x, all right? Because when you use the power rule, you bring this to the front, and then you subtract 1 from the power, so that's supposed to be a 1. All right, so we have k minus x in the numerator divided by this whole expression being raised to the negative 1 half. We'll come downstairs, but let me put down the v. Speed of light in medium 2 divided, I mean, multiplied by the square root of v squared plus k minus x squared, okay? All right, so there we have it. So let's see. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to do an isolation here so that you can see what's going on. If I focus my attention on this part, this portion of this expression right here, and this portion of this expression, can I substitute it with something else? Well, let's go back to the triangle that we created. Um, if you notice, x, x right here is the opposite of this triangle, okay? And this right here is a hypotenuse, all right? So if you think about right triangle trig, which right triangle trig relates opposite and hypotenuse, all right? Just think back to Sokotoa. If you think back to Sokotoa, uh, sine relates opposite and hypotenuse okay so in this triangle triangle this triangle right here formed uh in medium one we have the situation where sine of theta one equals the opposite which is x over the hypotenuse which is this uh which is um the square root of a square plus x square and guess what that is exactly what we have here x over the square root of uh, a squared plus x squared. So we can replace this piece with sine of theta 1, okay? So this ex expression becomes uh, this whole thing. Since v is downstairs, we just leave it there. So we're going to have sine of theta 1, which is a replacement of this, over the speed of light in medium 1, all right? Minus, let's how about k minus x divided by the square root of v squared plus k minus x squared. Let's take a look at the second triangle, the one down here. This is a reference angle right here, so that makes this side my opposite, okay? And this right here is my hypotenuse, okay? So we have exactly the same scenario. If we do, if we take sine of theta 2, what do you see happening? If you do sine of theta 2, you're going to have 
the opposite, which is k minus x divided by opposite of a hypotenuse, right? From so, opposite of a hypotenuse is the square root of b squared plus k minus x squared. Okay? So, uh, guess what? This ratio we have here is exactly what we have right here. k minus x squared over the square root of b squared plus x minus k minus x squared. All right, so I can make that substitution, and we're going to have sine of theta 2 divided by the velocity of light in medium 2. All right, and that's basically the TDX. All right, so to minimize time, we're just going to set this equal to 0, as we normally do for optimization, so set dt dx equals 0. So if we do that, we're going to have um, sine of theta 1 over uh, speed of light in medium medium 1 minus, minus uh, sine of theta 2 divided by the speed of light in medium 2 equals 0. If I, add, if I add this expression to both sides, I'll end up with sine of theta 1 over v1 equals sine of theta 2 over v2. Okay? And there goes Snell's law. All right. So some people might argue, wait, wait, wait. The diagram is not consistent with uh, Snell's law, but it, it actually... It actually is consistent with Snell's law. Let me show you how, how it's basically the same thing as Snell's law. So um, I'm going to draw the interface. So let's say we have the interface right here. And then we have a point A. Just going to make a sketch. Point A. And then a point C. And light traveling in medium 1. And then light traveling in medium 2. Okay. I drew a right angle like this. A right triangle like this and a right triangle like that. And then uh, I call this theta 1 and then this theta 2, okay? This is what we have, theta 2. This is what we have upstairs here. That's how we started this diagram, okay? But that's not what in the uh, Snell's law normally looks like in physics textbooks. So what I'm going to do is let me draw for you the, uh, the normal, okay? So here goes the normal through the interface. And you know that the normal is parallel, it's normal. It's parallel to this side, right? And it's also parallel to this side. So since this line is a parallel and I'll have a transversal cutting through, this angle is automatically theta 1. Okay? And then this angle, I mean, these two angles are alternate interior angles, right? And then this angle is congruent to this angle because you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal and alternate interior angles are congruent. So this angle right here is equal to theta 2. Okay? And if uh, light has V1, Speed in medium 1 and v2. So this is exactly what Snell's law is. So we basically have sine of theta 1 over v1 is equal to sine of theta 2 over v2. Okay? And if you you can also do some algebra with this, and you can basically have a sine of theta 1 over sine of theta 2 equals v1 over v2. That's also equal to the refractive index of medium 1 over the refractive index of medium 2. Okay, so th that basically shows you that you can use calculus to derive some really cool results in physics. Okay, so that basically completes the proof. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, you can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. And if you like this video, you can click like down here. Um, please, please, please post a comment to tell me what you think about this clip. More clips coming from at Thanks again and have a wonderful day.